I want to thank you all for coming to the 2014 commencement exercises of Rama Bible Training College. This, this marks the 40th graduation of Rama. As we begin, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each one of these 403 graduates of Rama Bible Training College who are being honored here tonight. This night represents a culmination of effort, sacrifice, and determination on the part of these graduates. We thank you not only for the effort, sacrifices, and accomplishments that have marked their paths to this point, but for the destinies that lie before each one, for the divine purpose that calls them to walk boldly into the future, carrying faithfully the light that they have received. We thank you for the training that's been imparted to them, and we rejoice in knowing that as they apply what they have received, their lives as well as the lives of individuals they come in contact with will be changed for eternity. Tonight, these graduates stand before a congregation. Tomorrow, they go forth to reach a generation. We know that as they go, they will not go in their own wisdom or strength, but in the might and the power of the Holy Ghost, relying on the greater one who indwells them. May each one of them be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, and may they walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Are you ready to worship God tonight in this place? Hallelujah, Father, we're grateful. We're so grateful to be in this time and in this place right now. We thank you, Lord, that we want to shout out your goodness, shout out your greatness.
We're thankful for your freedom. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we're grateful. We have the freedom to be able to come into a place like this and worship and magnify you in this place as a family, as a Rhema family.
Everything that we want, everything that we need is in you. And Father, it is our prayer and our cry to have more of you in our lives. As we leave this place, we want more of you every day. We thank you for it, Lord. We magnify you, God. And all we want and all we need is found in Jesus. And all we ask is more of you. <laughs> Come on, say nothing else. And nothing else will sound.
This is the 40th time that I've stepped to this podium to give a welcome. And we are so glad that you're all here with us to celebrate this achievement of all of these graduates that sit on the floor. 37 of them have been right here. The first one was in Sheridan Assembly, the second one was in Will Rogers High School, and the third one was at in the RMA at Rama, and after that we came down here. You know, I, I, we're privileged to have one of our Kenneth Hagin Ministry board members that's been with us, I don't know, since the early 70s, Brother Lowell Furry. Lowell, stand up. He's been here. He's seen 40 of these classes graduate with us. But we're also privileged to have two of our Canadian, Kenneth Hagin Ministry Canadian board members with us as uh, both of them have, uh, have a, a son and a daughter graduating in this class. And uh, uh, Trevor Newfelt, where is Trevor at? Stand up, Trevor, wherever you at. There he is, Trevor Newfelt. His, his daughter, Brooke, is graduating. Thank you, Trevor. And Tom Zimmerman, uh, where's Tom at? Uh, same area. Same area. Uh, oh, there's Tom. His son Cameron is graduating. And uh, we're just so glad to have these board members with us tonight, as well as all of you. You know, we, we, we couldn't have this if we didn't have all of you. And so... Turn to your neighbor and say, I sure I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Tonight, just, we just a, a few weeks ago, one of our instructors, longtime instructor, 30 years at Raymond Bible Training College, Brother Cooper Beatty went home to be with the Lord. I'm sure he's found dad by now, and I imagine that they're looking over the banisters of heaven right now, looking at this sea of red and all of these students. But I wanted to give recognition to them tonight. Let me say as I stand here to speak to you as a student body, for the last time. We have done our best as a faculty and staff to give you everything that we could possibly give you to help you to succeed in your area of ministry. We can stand in the classroom and teach you, but you're the ones that's gonna have to walk through those doors and walk out into the field of harvest for the Lord and put it all to work. We can't do that for you. We can tell you some of the how-tos and so forth. And I want to encourage you to not forget your roots. Have you ever noticed that any plant that becomes separated from the roots dries up? Don't become separated from your roots, which is Rama. That is where you will pull your strength from that will sustain you through all of the hardships that you will face. I look at you tonight and it's, it's bittersweet. Number one, because I've been in this, doing this, well, I've been in it all my life, 74 years, but I've been preaching and ministering for 56 years and I know the hardships that you're going to face it's with excitement that I see you graduate but it's with a little bit of sadness 
as I know what you're going to face when you get out there. But I know that if you'll take the president's motto, I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. And the faith that we have tried to instill in you, you can make it through. There is not enough devils in hell to stop you from doing the will of God that he has for your life. And with that, I want to say, go tear up the devil's kingdom. God bless you. Amen. At this time, I have the privilege to recognize and honor some of the people that are here tonight also. First, we honor and express our appreciation for each and every one of these graduating students. They've made sacrifices. They got to class on time. They worked jobs. Some of them even worked night shift, came straight from work, went home, did their homework, slept a little bit, ate a little bit, went right back at it. And we honor them, and we know that because of this, you've, you've sown good seed. We expect great fruit uh, from you, so we honor you tonight. I'd also like to recognize the family and spouses of all of the graduates. Without your support and encouragement, many of our graduates would not be able to participate in this ceremony tonight. Along with the graduates, I would like to say thank you for all that you did to make it possible for the graduates to be here tonight. Will all of our family members of the graduate please stand right now? Graduates, let's give them a great big hand clap. Thank you very much. You may be, you may be seated. We also want to thank those of you who have faithfully supported Rama Bible Training College financially over the years from our Word Partner Club members to those that have sent gifts and, and donations. Some that have said, I didn't get to go to Rama, but I'm gonna help somebody else go and they've sent their donations in to help train these men and women. You've made it possible for us to offer excellent training and keep it at an affordable cost. So to all of you, we all say thank you. Let's give them a great big hand clap. I'd like for each of our international M1 visa students who are graduating tonight to stand up, if you would, please. These, these students tonight represent 12 countries, Albania, Brazil, Canada, China, Colombia, Finland, India, Germany, Mexico, Nigeria, South Korea and the United Kingdom. We've reserved a section for the family members of our international students who may have traveled for a very long distance to be here. If all of our parents of international students and friends, if you would please stand over here in this section over here and over if you're go ahead and stand. Give them a great big hand clap. Thank you. You may be seated. We also want to recognize a special group of our graduates who are here tonight. We have among our graduates veterans of the Armed Forces of the United States of America. These veterans have served their country and now they stand trained and ready to serve their Lord and Savior. Would those veterans among our graduates please stand at this time. We thank you. You can be seated. We also want to recognize tonight some a distinguished guests with, with his wife we have on the platform, Dr. Regis Wanika, newly appointed president of Southwestern Christian University in Bethany, Oklahoma. He's also a graduate of a Rama campus that was in Zimbabwe for a short time, many, many years ago. But SCU and RBTC have entered into an articulation and classroom agreement on the campus of Rama. And this is fulfillment of what our president 
uh, Kenneth W. Hagen had envisioned for many years to be able to offer our students not only the biblical training and the, tr the training and the Word of God and the practical areas, but also to offer them along with that an opportunity to earn a college degree. And so we thank, we thank uh, Southwestern Christian University for that opportunity to have that right there on our campus. Dr. Anika, and we thank you very much. Will you and your wife, Mongi, please stand up. Let's give them a big hand clap tonight. Thank you.
sitting there wondering how many of you in the audience had the privilege of sitting where these people sit or you graduated from one of our 187 campuses in 46 nations would all the Rama grads stand in the audience that are from U.S. or one of the international schools? Great. Glad to have you. You may be seated. Our speaker tonight, Dr. Steve Halp, is a 1986 graduate of Rama Bible Training College. He uh, also happens to be a friend of mine, well, as a lot of people are, but we have banged on the basketball court many, many times, and he says that I didn't cut him any slack, <laughs> but uh, I've had the privilege of, of working with Dr. Halp and, and helping him to work through so several situations in his life, and uh, he he received his doctorate of uh, in biblical uh, studies from the Friends University in uh, Kansas City. He's a native Ohioan, and he founded Harvest International Outreach up in Kansas City, and he did something that I have said would be a great thing to do if anybody else. He bought an old uh, Tanger Mall that went out, an outlet mall that went out right across the street from Worlds of Fun. If you've ever been to Kansas City Worlds of Fun, he's right across the street. And it's probably, it is uh, one of the fastest growing churches in Kansas City. They also have two satellite church locations. They also have a, <coughs> a nursery through eighth grade private school. They have a outreach initiative called Pre uh, Project Destiny, which includes a senior citizens living facility. And excuse me, the last time I was up there, I got to tour that. It was really nice. They also have a gymnasium and an activity center. There's a. They also have a restaurant. Now these are separate from the senior citizens deal, and uh, they have a, a home for uh, teen unwed mothers, and. In the works is the Career Development Training Center, a family residential subdivision. Excuse me. Dr. Halp is also the author of a bestseller, No More Souls Tied, along with four other books. He, along with his wife, Dr. Donna Halp, here on the platform, minister together in many venues but I am privileged to have him to speak to this graduation class tonight. Would you make welcome one of our own, Dr. Steve Howe. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Indeed, what an honor uh, it is to, uh, to be here tonight. And... For the first time in my life, I'm here at a Rama graduation, and I'm up on the platform. Uh, it's a different view, but I do want to thank God for his goodness. There's a lot of people that I like to thank, and I believe the Lord, I trust, has given me something that I pray will inspire you as students. As pastor already made reference, that in 1986, uh, just a couple of years ago, <laughs> I was sitting where you're seated today. And I want to share, I pray, a few things of the journey. Because I believe the mandate that is on your life as the 40th graduating class, I believe your mandate is much larger, much more profound than the mandate we received in 1986. I want to thank God for uh, the great dean that you have here at Raymond today. Wow. 
want to thank God for all of your dynamic instructors. Uh, it's certainly done my heart good to see one of my most challenging teachers when I was in school, uh, Mr. Doug Jones. <laughs> Uh, there's a special place in my heart for him. Uh, <laughs> obviously, you too. <laughs> but I want to thank God for Pastor and Mrs. Hagan and all of you who support this great institution. If you will um, be patient and be kind. I believe the Holy Ghost will say something tonight that will make us forget that we're at a graduation ceremony. Amen. And I believe that God will make an impartation to you, the students, that you will go out and make a mark in this world uh, that will advance the kingdom agenda. As I'm looking at you today, I'm thinking about when I was sitting there, and it was so exciting like it is tonight. But tomorrow, you will have to face everything that you've been taught, every impartation that you've received. Starting tomorrow, you will face that destiny. And for some of you, like myself, when I marched down the aisle as you did tonight and I sat in the chair, I believe it was on this section here, maybe around the third or the fourth row, I had all of these things on the inside of me of what I believe God had called me to do. But the reality of the matter, after the ceremony was over, I realized and came to the realization that I had all of these dreams and visions and aspirations to obey God, but no financial assistance. <laughs> Sound like I'm finding my cousins in here now. And so, to try to create an environment where you will at least listen to me, most people won't listen until they have some glimpse of your accomplishments. So I'm going to speed forward for a second, and then I'm going to back up. As Pastor made reference, we were perhaps one of the first churches in the nation to purchase a mall, and he said uh, outlet mall. It wasn't an outlet mall. An outlet mall, you got to go outdoors to go in one store, back outdoors to go in another store. No, we purchased the mall. You can put over 20,000 people in our hallway. Are you listening to me? I said, are you listening to me? And so today, we, have, we own the mall, we own the restaurant, we own the unwed mother's home, we own the campsite with about 100 acres, uh, we own some other land off of the interstate, and they came in and done an assessment uh, not, not even a year ago, and everything that God has blessed us to accumulate to replace it today would cost over $29 million. Now, that's today. Now, let's back up to where you are now and where I was in 1986 want to show you the awesomeness of God. And I'm talking to somebody who is sitting out there in the chair. And you know God has spoken to you to go here or to go there. But your resources, you don't know where it's coming from. And God sent me here today to tell you, you don't have to know where your resources are coming from because God is your source. So in 1986, Pastor Hagen, Mrs. Hagen, Dad Hagen, who I got real close to at the latter part of his life, and Mom Hagen, 
I mean, they laid their hands on me and they said a bunch of things to me. And, you know, I mean, it sounded like French at the time. It sounded like German at the time. And I don't understand either one of those languages. But it sounded good like they were speaking something positive over my life. But after they got finished speaking to me, I had to go out the door and get in a 1969 Toyota. I said 69. In 1986. Are you listening to me? Amen. A white one, if you please, with blue vinyl interior, if you please. And so I know that I had heard from God to go to Kansas City, Missouri, just like you've heard from God to go to a particular place. But in, for some of you like myself, God has called you to a place that you've never been. You don't know anybody. You don't know the north, the south, the east, or the west, but the greatest thing you have is that you know you have heard from God. And so in 1986, in a 69 Toyota, I get on Interstate 44 and then catch 71 Highway, taking me north to Kansas City. I get into a city that I don't know anybody. I had never been there in my life, but God had given me a call a charge, a mandate to go and take what Dad Hagen and Pastor Hagen and Doug Jones and Mel Piper and Doc Horton and Mr. Cooper Beatty, whose class I was glad it was over. <laughs> and so I had to take all of these things that they had given me, just like you have to take all of the things that these instructors and this great institution has given you. And they've taught you the principles of faith. They've taught you how to stand on the word of God. But tomorrow, say tomorrow, tomorrow. it is going to be a different day. Because starting tomorrow, everything you learn is like the rubber meeting the road. If you have your Bibles, if you would indulge me for just a moment. I don't really want to preach. I just want to talk to you. My dear friend, Bishop T.D. Jakes, uh, texted me a couple of days ago. And uh, he said, I'm calling on several of my dear friends around the, the world to pray for me. And uh, I'm wondering, what does he want prayer for? I was just with him a couple of weeks ago. We were you know, just kind of spending some time together and talking about ministry and talking about life and talking about business. And so I didn't quite understand. Then the text finished out and he had got a call from Oprah to go to Chicago to do uh, a couple of tapings. And he wanted prayer. He wanted certain people around the country to pray for him that he would do what God would tell him to do and do it in a way of excellence. So I text him back and said, you said something to me years ago before you took me to South Africa and exposed me to the world. I said, you said, when someone invites you to speak, they're inviting you. So when you get there, don't act like somebody else, act like yourself. So since Pastor Hagen and Lynette Hagen invited me to be the commencement speaker tonight, Amen. I might as well be myself and not try to be somebody else. Can I do that tonight? The word that I want to give you tonight is courage to trust God. Courage to trust God. You've got a lot of information. You've got a lot of principles. You've got a lot of steps. You have a lot of how-to's. But to implement all of the things that they've poured into you for the last year or the last two years or for the last three years, it's going to take courage to fulfill the call of God that is on your life. Many start out but not all finish because they lose one of the great ingredients that you need to have not only to start your journey but to finish your journey and that's to have courage. Are you listening to me? My mind goes to Joshua, and that's how I'm looking at this 40th year graduating class. 
like Joshua, God has called him, has trained him, and developed him to be the next leader of the people of God. Your Bible students, certainly the people behind me, know the story. Moses, who was the leader of God's people. For 40 years, he was in Pharaoh's house. And then when God got ready to use him, he had to take another 40 years to get Pharaoh out of him on the backside of the desert. And when he ushered Moses into his ministry, Moses was 80 years old. Then another 40 years passed, and the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 28 that Moses was 120 years old, and he was at the end of his journey, another 40 years. And right behind him was this young, faithful, loyal, stayed hooked up man named Joshua. And Pastor Hagen could not have said it better. I'm going to get ahead of myself a little bit, but I'll do it anyway. I believe, Pastor, a lot of the success that we have experienced in ministry is because after 1986, I stayed, we stayed connected to Rhema Bible Training Center. Not just with our, with our mouths, but we stay connected with our finances even to this day. And I don't believe you can stay connected to something great and not produce greatness in your own life. Somebody help me tonight. So in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, God gives a charge to this young man as I'm giving you tonight. And the word of the Lord says, be strong, class of the 40th year graduating class. God is charging you tonight, this 40th year graduating class, to be strong and of good courage. And tonight, I want you to know, if you don't know where your help is coming from, if you don't know who's going to help you, you've got all these things on the inside and you don't know how it's going to be done, I want to charge you tonight to not fear, nor to be afraid. For the Lord God who was with Moses, the same God who was with Joshua, the same God who was with Zechariah, the same God who's with Esther, the same God with Haggai, the same God who's with Abraham, the same God who's with Jacob. Are you listening to me? The same God who was with Isaac and the same God who's with Dad Hagen and the same God who's with Pastor Hagen is the same God who's with you today. And what God has started in you is going to come to pass if you don't give up, if you don't quit. One of the things that I've learned about God, Pastor, after graduating from Ramah, is that I, in my own heart, it would be so wonderful if God would tell you how he's going to do everything before you start. But it seems as though God tells you what you need to know on a need-to-know basis. I mean, when I think about what God has done in my life and ministry today, if I could have seen that in 1986, all the things that I went through to get to this day, it would have been a whole lot easier but along the journey, it appeared on so many occasions like I wasn't going to make it, like we were not going to be successful. Are you listening to me? I struck out after graduating from Rhema. I went into Kansas City. Amen. I drove into the city. And when I got there, nobody was on the side of the highway cheering me on. I pulled into the city. I felt of the Lord that the Lord told me at that time seminars were real popular. So I put on a three-day seminar. I mean, I'm a mighty man of faith. Dad Hagen's done put his hands on me. Pastor Hagen done put his hand on me. Doug Jones done put his hands on me. I'm ready to go. I get to Kansas City. I pass out a thousand flyers on my own, one by one. I put them on cars. I put them on doors. I, I left them at businesses. I passed out a thousand flyers about this great man of faith who God has released into Kansas City to put on this dynamic three-day seminar. I went to Ramada Inn and rented my room. I went to Sam's or Walmart and got me some cookies and punch, and I got it ready for the crowd that was going to show up. I had on my Rama suit. Y'all know the Rama suit, right? It's the one you've been wearing for the last two or three years. I had on my Rhema suit. 
I show up the first day for the seminar, the conference, that I'm going to teach the people faith, and here I am. I'm in the room. I'm praying. I got my sound system on that I had purchased in Vietnam when I was in the military, and I mean, I'm ready to go. And this was on a Wednesday. Seven o'clock came. Seven thirty came. Eight o'clock came. And nobody showed up. I packed my stereo system up, gathered my cookies, took my punch. I said, well, maybe people are doing something on Wednesday. They'll be out Thursday. I show up Thursday at the same hotel in the same room, yes, in the same suit. I, I mean, nobody saw it the day before. <laughs> so I got the punch. I got the cookies. I got nice music, Ron Cannoli playing. Man, I'm ready to go. It's Thursday night. And nobody shows up. So I said, well, they didn't show up Thursday because Bill Cosby was real big back then. I said, they're all watching Bill Cosby. So the last night of the seminar, the hotel didn't want to take my money. They took it now. But they didn't want to take my money. They felt sorry for me. Imagine how I looked pulling up in 1986 in a 69 Toyota and the same suit on every night, same cookies, same punch. Now, while you're laughing, I'm going to teach you a great lesson. So the third night, the last night, a lady came to the conference. She didn't come because of the thousand flyers I passed out. She came because one of, my, one of my friends who graduated from Raymond with me in Atlanta called them in Kansas and said, I got a powerful friend who's powerful in the Word that's teaching a dynamic seminar at Ramada Inn. She was the only one who showed up. And man, Pastor, I preached my heart out to that one person. And when I got finished, she was crying, and she said, man, I believe God's really going to do something with you, but I'll be back when you grow. We've been growing ever since, but I haven't seen her yet. Now, hear, hear what I'm saying. So I'm paying this hotel. You got to hear this. I'm paying this hotel for the third night. God sent me to Kansas City. At that time, I don't have a job, and I don't have any money coming in. And I got two babies who need milk and need pampers. Are you listening to me? So the hotel is looking like they don't want to take the last payment, and I know they can look at me, and I was looking at them like, I don't want to give you the last payment. <laughs> but they took it. One person showed up. I packed my stuff, put it in the car, got along by myself with God, and tears rolling down my cheek. God, I'm in a city. I don't know nobody. And I know you sent me here. The same voice I heard that told me to go to Ramah. I already had a degree. When I told my friends I was coming to Ramah, they said, well, you crazy? You can go to school. You can go to Christian school in this city. But God told me to go to Ramah. So I knew his voice. Tears are rolling down my cheek. I don't know how I'm going to take care of my babies. But I got to give these people this last little bit of money I got because I did reserve the room. And I never forget it. Hear me, classmates. I said, God, what am I supposed to do? And just like you're hearing my voice tonight, I heard God's voice. He said to me, whose money is it? And with tears in my eyes, I said, it's yours. And he said, can I do with my money 
what I want to do? What's the moral of the story? I never would have been able to tell you tonight that after 27 years of starting the ministry, and Pastor talked about the satellite churches, we just planted another church. We're getting ready to buy another building with a gymnasium already on the property. $29 million worth of assets. That never would have happened if I had not passed the test at the beginning, settling it in my heart and with God that whatever he puts in my hands, that it all belongs to him. And if you settle that tonight, that whatever God puts in your trust, that it all belongs to him, then God can take you to the top. Because you will never compromise your integrity. You will never compromise your position in God. Are you listening to me tonight? And so, it doesn't make any difference if you're graduating and you're all alone. When I sit out there in 1986 in the graduating class, what pastor didn't know, he found out later that by and large I had raised myself. I was raised in a house, a shack with no lights and no running water. Kids made fun of me when I went to school because I had holes in my shoes and I wore girls' clothes. Are you listening to me? I used to dig worms out of the ground to sell it to the bake store so that I could get something to eat. I used to borrow sardines and other things in the local store just so I could have something to eat. At 17 years old, being an all-state basketball player in Ohio, I came home and found my father dead in the shack that we lived in. Are you listening to me? I'm only saying this to you so that you'll understand you won't have any excuse in the world for not doing something great for God because everything you need, you already have it because you've got God on your side. I wish somebody would magnify the Lord. So tonight to the students, turn to one of your students and say this, take courage. God is going to use you. Come on, tell your other neighbor on the other side, take courage. God is going to use you. Now shout it out to yourself. Take courage. God is going to use me. Not only is God going to use you, 40th year graduating class, there's not a demon in hell that can stop you from doing what God told you to do. And so tonight, if God can raise up an old boy who was raised in a shack and when it rained, he would have to put out cans or a slop b a bucket. Or when he had to go to the restaurant and have to go to an outhouse, we never had running water. Used to get the water from Miss Willa May's house, a bootlegger. If God can raise up a young man like that, that's overseeing today a ministry of over $29 million, then tell me what God can't do with you if you'll only obey him and take courage in him. There's no excuse. There's a reason why. There's a reason why God chose you to be the 40th year graduating class. 40 is significant. It's also a sign of the changing of the guards. You just so happen to be picked by God. There's something fresh, new, and different that God is getting ready to release in the earth. And you are the ones that he has chosen to release that fresh anointing, that fresh glory. You are the ones. Courage must be exercised by faith, not by feelings. If you're going to be stopped by feelings, then don't start. Faith must be exercised, not by feelings. Faith has to be exercised. Faith just simply means that you trust. So I can say it tonight and not distort the meaning that faith is trust and trust is faith. Well, how do you trust somebody you don't know? That's what they've been pouring into you for the last two or three years. They've been pouring in you to the knowledge of God and who you are in Christ Jesus. 
And they have proven to you over the last few years that the God that we serve, that he can be trusted. No matter what it looks like. Hmm. So what is faith? Faith is trust. How do you get trust? How do you get trust? Hmm. How do you get trust? How, how do you get trust? What, what is faith? Faith is, faith is trust. But how do you get trust? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Faith, I understand it, but how, how do you get trust? What is faith? Faith is trust, but, but how do you get trust? How do you get trust? Ah, you get trust by experience. By experience. I trust him more tonight because I have a resume of his faithfulness. Now some of you are looking real cute, but if the truth be told, it's a miracle you graduated. <laughs> Taking instructor Doug Jones out of the equation. I say it's a miracle because some of you you have to believe God for your tuition. And sometimes you're inclined to almost be envious of some of your classmates who everything was paid for. I remember when I was in school, uh, my trade was around aircraft when I was in Vietnam and I came home, went to business school and graduated. But my profession of making money prior to coming to Rama was around aircraft. And so finally, when I did secure a job here in Tulsa, I secured a job with an aircraft company in Tulsa. The amazing thing is that I got off at 7 in the morning, and I had to be sitting in my seat by 8 o'clock the same morning. Had it been, is that still the case at school? You, it's, oh, it's 8.30? <laughs> Why were y'all rushing a brother back in 86? They was trying to find a reason to remove me. <laughs> so you all have 30 more minutes of grace. But you should have seen me every day getting out of that factory at 7 o'clock, rushing over to Raymer Student Housing, uh, doing a quick shower, throwing on my quick Raymer clothes, dashing across the street to be in my seat by 8 o'clock every day. And still what I was making wasn't enough I mean, everything was so tight. I don't know if they have it now, but back then they had a Moyer fund that I had applied for and received uh, some assistance. And that's why I owe. I, I, I stand here today, I owe so many people. I, I, owe, I owe Dad Hagen, who laid his hands on me and released me. We have his picture at our church, a big old picture because I want everybody to know who my spiritual father was. Are you listening to me? I owe Pastor Hagen for when I faced one of the most difficult times in my life, he and his wife. That's why I want to encourage you students to stay connected to your roots. Stay connected to Raymond because you never know when you're going to need him. And here I was pastoring this ministry, going through one of the most difficult times in my life, and pastor and first lady uh, Lynette called me and said, come on home. And little did I know when they said, come on home, they meant home. I mean, they took me to their home and took me to their house. And she cooked a wonderful dinner and some of the best greens I ever had in my life. And they just loved on me. I'm feeling down. I'm feeling discouraged. The devil's trying to tell me I'm a failure with all the success that's around me. And they encouraged me and lifted me up. Are you listening to me? And finally, when I finally got my equilibrium, God brought me a great, great blessing into my life. Uh, you all ever heard of that book called Money Cometh? Yeah, by Dr. Leroy Thompson. Well, there's a couple in that book that he writes about at the end of that book. That couple in that book is my wife and I. Are you listening to me? Sorry to have a place to stay. Sweetheart, I've gone too far without acknowledging you. Would you please stand?
Here she was, a graduate of Southern University, her master's from LSU in education, her doctorate in, in, in education. She's been teaching and, uh, uh, in school and around children for over 30-something years. And now today she helps oversee our school and our ministry. Amen. We'll be celebrating 25 years from K through 8th grade this coming January because of her leadership and her Thule. Can somebody say amen? And the only reason I was in position to receive all of those blessings was because of my connection to Rainbow Bible Training Center. Pastor Hagen and Mrs. Hagen. To the student in the back who your encounter with Pastor and Mrs. Hagen maybe it hadn't been, but maybe once or twice since you've been in school. And you witness other students seem like they have an audience with them all the time. And the devil will tell you that you're being shortchanged. I want you to know tonight, you're not shortchanged. You're just as connected to Rama and to their hearts as the person on the front row. Because Rama, we're just one big red and white and now black robe family. Are, are you listening to me? I just want you to know tonight, I want you to be encouraged. Because for some of you, when you leave, you're going to face obstacles. And there will be times in the natural when it's going to look like you're not going to make it. And the devil will tell you you're not going to make it. But I pray to God that you'll hold on to these truths tonight. That if you will take courage and stand on what you've been taught, the Word of God. The Word of God will deliver you every time. Every time. It'll deliver you every time. My mind goes to a man who I had the privilege of knowing, pray for me by the name of Dr. Lester Summerall. I remember when he was at our church and I was riding him around. He was sharing some things with me. And in 19, I believe it was 1936, God called him to take the word of God to the world. And he says, he's written it in many books, but I knew him and talked with him personally. He said, I left home, Brother Steve, with 65 cents. 65 five cents. And I thought, well, I got a better deal than him. I got a 69 Toyota. <laughs> but starting out with 65 cents, look at the impact that he is still making in the world. Dad Hagen just started out with a word from God and look at the impact that Dad Hagen is still making in the earth today. And it will be the same with you. So you take courage. If you don't hear anything else, you hear this. God is going to do something great in each of your lives. God is going to do something great in each of your lives. God is going to do something great in each of your lives. God is going to do something great in each of your lives. You are going to the 40th year graduating class. You are going to be like a whirlwind released on this world, taking the word of faith to the four corners of this globe and so God is charging you tonight to take courage because what God has started in your life, he is going to finish it until the day of his coming. You're going to make it. You're going to make a mark. Touch somebody. Tell them. Say, you're going to make a mark. Come on, touch somebody. Say, you're going to make a mark. And everything you need, everything you need to be successful in the ministry that God has called you to, 
in the name of Jesus, I stand here tonight under the unction of the Holy Spirit and declare and decree over your life that everything you need, God will supply. So take courage. You're going to make a mark in this world that cannot be erased. Hallelujah. Glory. Can somebody shout in here? Can somebody shout in here? Hallelujah. Can somebody shout in here? 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 You're going to do it. 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 Thanks, brother. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. They're going to do it. 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 They're going to do it to the glory of God. They're going to do it. Glory. I tell you what, I, Brother Hop, I feel, I feel the spirit of Caleb in here. Somebody give me a mountain. I got to find me a mountain to take. Hallelujah. How many of you are going to find you a mountain? God's going to give you a mountain. Glory to God. All right, you can be seated. Praise the Lord. Woo. Hallelujah. I was, we were talking together about who should we have come speak this year for the 40th. And Mrs. Hagen just made a statement. She said, we need a preacher. And I just came up out of my mouth, Steve Haup, Dr. Haup. And I think, uh, I think God had ordained something for us tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I present the graduating class of 2014, I, I want to draw your attention to the two tables situated on the platform. You'll notice that these tables do not contain the traditional diploma covers, but instead they contain red relay batons. Uh, let me assure our graduates and all the family that the, the diplomas are in the building, and <laughs> we'll be giving those out after, they are, have, have, after the recessional. They, they'll get those later. But the reason that <coughs> excuse me, we present these batons tonight is due in part to a message that President Kenneth W. Hagan delivered to the student body back in 2002 during a class orientation. In that message, President Hagan traced the history of revival down through every generation and challenged each student to carry the baton of revival to this present generation. This evening, we still show that, that, uh, that sermon to each student body in orientation. And uh, the response is the same every year. This evening, when each student graduate, when each graduate comes to the platform, they'll receive a red baton, symbolizing their commitment to take their place in the end time revival and carry the message they have received at Rhema to their generation. The inscription on the baton reads, I commit today to carry the baton of revival to, the, revival to this generation. I will carry the banner of faith and God's power to a lost and dying world. This is my time to do all that God has called me to do. At this time, with the entire 2014 second year graduating class of Rama Bible Training College, please stand. <laughs> it is now my privilege 
to present to Dr. Kenneth W. Hagen, the president of Raymond Bible Training College, and Reverend Lynette Hagen, <coughs> excuse me, the director of Raymond Bible Training College, the second year graduating class of 2014 comprised of 307 students. These students have satisfactorily completed Raymond's ministerial training course and have complied with all the requirements necessary for this honor. We thus bestow upon them the privileges and responsibility pertaining thereto. Will all of our second year graduates please be seated. At this time, President Kenneth W. Hagan will present a baton to Nancy Sue Sadowski, who is unable to ascend to the platform. Will the first two rows of graduating second year students please stand and come forward to receive your batons. I would ask you to hold your applause until all the names have been read, but I know that would be a fruitless exercise. <laughs> Susan Elizabeth Stevens. Joseph Luke Odon. David Machazere. Elizabeth J. Matthews King. Aku Machazere. Richie Lewis King. Karina Ann Shreve. Sean Kevin Weisel. Carol Marzan Carrion. Sosie Weisel. John Allen Walker. Myungjin Kim. Wendy Felix Maldonado. Miguel Estuardo Gara. Gaigon Mai Gang Mai. Multi Hasso Kurt Westide. Deborah Egakum. Helen Myra G. Abiba Barhani. Rahman Rafat T. Vasilias. Juan Felipe Bedoya Ortegan. Chiangahu Liao. J. Paul Jin. Eugene Masango Ngole. Julio Guri. <laughs> Wilma Fiona Larrier. James Yung Koi Pang. Annie Brom Jones. Julie Marie Hadabaugh. Evan Oaks. Angela Renee DuBose. Whitney Alexis Oaks. Larry Scott Hal Jr. Anthony Bernard Washington. <laughs> Chinye Ojipuchi Chinyam. Ansley Mache Hoffman. Amy Margaret Casey. <laughs> Levi Andrew Wine. Earl Lee Casey II. Yeah. Ruth Sanchez. Yeah. Christy Nicole Cothran. Yeah. Corinne Lee Garcia. Yeah. Rachel Nicole Milner. Yeah. Elise Shanae Alves. Yeah. Warren Craig Brown. Yeah. Sarah Nicole Finley. Tracy Burnett. George Wright Smith, Jr. Gabriel E.D. Borden. 
Benjamin N. Vavilin. Brian Andrew Gafka. David Scott Milburn. Sh Shiloh Gabriel Gafka. Romel Augustin Navarro, Jr. William Thomas Bray, Jr. Andrea Roche. Ivory Viana Bray. Antonio Duane Summers. Kelly Lynn Betts. Terrace Michael Williams. Michael Patrick Betts. Cynthia Sunhi Nazara. Elva Jean Hope. Jessica Morgan Schwab. Shannon Gentry Hurwitz. Justin Moss. Sheila Diane Densler. Tricia Rose Turner. Tanya Suzanne Palmer. Mary Ann Starr. Suzanne Keck. Susan Joy Louie. Philip David Baldwin. Panola Ann Washington. Rebecca Grace Baldwin. Christina May Menser. Courtney Lynn Cummings. Bradley Dean Mincer. Mariah Grace Hagel. Rufus D. White IV. Nicholas Marvin Hagel. Andrew Michael Martins. Benjamin David Logan Harder. Adyinka Aya Oladero. George Julius Barks. William David Sheets. Gary Wayne Kinzer. Christina Davis Sheets. Stephen Richard Kobalski. Joshua Michael Riley. Elizabeth Jane Kerbowski. Kendra Teresa Sabo. David West Blanchard. Carla Sanchez. Jordan Reed Hansen. Brittany Evelyn Sabo. Sherea Leanne Hansen. Derek Randall Small. Dylan Yanez Barrera. Cody Lane Lawson. Kimberly Jean Davies Hurt. Cameron David Zimmerman. Kimberly Elizabeth Frank. Alyssa Marie Rodriguez. DJ Wardofa Deddy. Rachel J. Mast. Hannah Opal Buck. David Toshio Kubota. Bethany Marie Ferguson. Courtney Ruth Kubota. Jordan Andrew Asher. Amanda D. Tallon. Evan Mitchell Hoover. Jordan Michael Tallon. Jesse Fair Klassen. Mary Catherine Adeline Schler. Edward Samuel Johnson. Alyssa Marie Medellin. Twinkle Johnson. Deidre Diona Reichart. Tommy Joe Sehan. Gabriel Isaac Sasinski. David James Kendall. Caleb Monroe Reese. Richard Paul Cisneros. Daryl Eugene Swartz. Joshua Ray Jones. 
Stephen James Roberson. Kippy Andrew Crane. Joshua Gabriel Ocon. Andrew Owen Morgan. Joshua James Schneider. Ryan Vaughn. Casey Sean Mina. Nolan Lane Ethel. Kenneth Lee Martins. Kara Marie Kirtner. Philip Stafford Ramsey. Brooke Elizabeth Greenewalt. Joshua David Hyatt. Chelsea Nicole Gallegos. Mashune Angelique Scott. Austin Joseph Bouchard. Lynn Ann Matzinger. Tyler James Johnson. Ryan Patrick Phelan. Brian Bailey Bush. Ocean Jordan Peak. Jennifer Rochelle Keller. Amber Jean Warner. Victoria Nicole Cardi. Ajla Marie Tode. Miranda Naomi Giles. Rebecca Ashley Zimbler. Dayon Ann Grundy. Lisette Toro. Stephanie Michelle Haro. Joy Vasquez. Crystal Rose Goss. Matthew Dale Nichols. Christopher Wilson Chapel. Kurt Gregory Posterick. Brandon Richard Chapel. Taylor Otterbein. Kayla Marie Chapel. Jeremiah David Knowles. Edward Cole Abel. Amy Lynn Knowles. Erica Renee Foster. Maddie Latrice McLaughlin. Mark Anthony Escamilla. Tiffany Nicole Loftus. Joshua Wayne Brown. Zhu Huan Van Dusen. Michael Martin Johnson. Deborah Kellen Rice Collado. James Etta Everett. Margaret Rosetta Robinson. Kayla Rose Nikawa Groves. Brooke Samantha Lee Neufeld. Hannah Joy Goodspeed. Sarah Paula Roteo. Katrina Elaine Demery. Kaylee Lynn Maracini. Kehalani Kuilan Blankenship. John Robert Veronese. Caitlin Louise Bird. Woodrow Cecil Underwood. Joseph Forrest Johnston. Elise Marie Underwood. Brittany Annette Rose Butler. Debbie Danielle Rodriguez. Brent Navelle Butler. David Anthony Rodriguez. Susanna Diane Decker. Chad Michael Simcox. Hendrick Garrett Decker. Zachary Daniel McHenry. Elizabeth Jean Went. Christopher Kim Weidman. Flora E. Dow. Lisa K. Shibley. Lakia Dominique Cross. Darren Wade Shibley. Michael Gutierrez. 
Edmund Lamar Marshall II. Edgar Reese Gutierrez. Seth Michael Lynn Prince. Moses Sheldon Hall. Joshua Michael Lewis. William Edward Dow. Joseph Benjamin Shreve. Daniela Alicia Bedward. Carrie Dawn Sowers. Adrian Lenar Davis. Christine Renee Schulke. Daniel Terrell Clark. Donald Eric Sims. Sarah Naomi Howard. Caitlin Nicole Skydema. Jasmine Taylor Guevara. Emily Rose Peabody. Alyssa Victoria Escabel. Jessica Abby Warwick. Lindsay Marie Eustace. Kennard James Warwick. Cameron Lewis Ekema. Joshua James Warwick. Casey Evan Kusick. Jacob William Roach. Wendy Lee Horn. Dakota Justice Rose. Carrie Elizabeth Bentliff. Natalia Andrea Leon Acosta. Jonathan Carey Doherty. Jasmine Karina Sims. Morgan Brooke Jacoby. Matthew Paul Pelfrey. Brooklyn Alana Dietz. Morgan Brian Snyder. Parker Jamison Boyce. Paige Danette Richard. Rachel Rebecca Hutton. Jana Elizabeth Palmer. Bashan Enoch Hicks. Melissa Michelle Schweizer. Janice Fisher. Danielle Elise Shoemaker. Naya Allen Fisher. Janesseret Marie Luck. Nicholas Anthony Fontana. Caroline Cecilia Lamkin. Tanner Chase Jenkins. Zachariah Lee Vandeviter. Eric William Allfeld. Ashley Diane Watkins. Jory Dean Jewett. Aaron Matthew Tice. Jonathan William Buck. Stephanie Rose Tice. Peggy Lynette Elliott. Suzanne Marie Rinker. Ronnie Wayne Elliott. Marie Louise Pettis. Amy Lynn Kinfield. Carissa Beth Stubbins. Bernard John Kinfield. Amelia Hope Summer. Timothy Andrew Brooks. Christina Emanuela McDowell. Joshua Allen Irvin. Angela Rose Palacino. Cameron Alexander Dosh. Jennifer Michelle Martinez. Logan Joseph Gardenhier. Ernest Martinez Jr. Randy Elise Eplin. Leticia Munoz. Casey Desiree Dwyer. Latoya Joy Rosario. Edgar Bertad. 
Joshua Paul Rogers. Garrett Wade Corley. Brooke J. Wood. Austin Christopher Kixey. Matthew Brian McKinney. Stephanie Wilson John. Jennifer Christine McKinney. Jasmine Del Rocio Chavez. Amy Elizabeth Skierski. <laughs> Ivan Ishmael Herrera. Diana Chavez Martinez. Joshua St. Paul Brinsley. Marissa Brianne Parr. Jordan Nicholas Gutierrez. Samantha Ann Macy. Luke Dwayne Cardiel. Robert Anthony Tangwall. Got through that bunch. John Nathan Biddlecombe. Erwin Davis Santiago. Robert Beverly Orball. At this time, will the entire 2014 third year, third year graduating class of Raymond Bible Training College please stand? Fifteen years ago, Raymond began its first third year program. There are now eight programs available that provide intensive ministerial training in their area of expertise. These programs are identified by the different colored stoles the third year graduates are wearing this evening. The programs and colors are identified as follows. Biblical studies, purple. General extended studies, white. Helps ministry, teal. Itinerant ministry, gray. Pastoral ministry, red. Student ministries, light blue. Worship, pink. World missions, gold. It is now my privilege to present to our president, Dr. Kenneth W. Hagan, and our director, Reverend Lynette Hagan, the third year graduating class comprised of 96 students. These students have completed the third year ministerial training courses in their selected fields and have complied with all the requirements necessary for this honor. We thus bestow upon them privileges and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Will all the third year graduates please be seated? And then with the first two rows, please stand back up. <laughs> Come forward and receive your batons. Marcia, Angelia, Faircloth. Hannah Marit Valyakainen. Olakunle Borashade. Jave Jandwe Neves J. Hararujo. Bertie Gladys Stocks. Gary Dean James. Kimberly D. Michelle Palmerston. Joshua Michael X. Christiana Olatula. 
Gabriella Jeanette Kerner. Philip Lynn Roth. Graydon James Blau. Rachel Marie Wimpy. Daniel Atono Katina. Alana Lise Runyon. Ian Garner Leslie Brown. Kristen Marie Weddle. Casey Allen Bird. Caleb Kakoa Nazara. Chelsea Dawn Jenkin. Travis J. Skinner. Ty Coulter Brady. Grayson Dakota Shirak. Hope Marie Hall. Luis Manuel Rosario. Cynthia Diana Alexander. Izel Parker Jr. He Young Kim. David Anthony Peasel. Virginia Marie McKee. Shirley Ann Steinmetz. James Weber Lucky. Diane Yvette Robert. Linda Lachelle Harris. Kayla Joe Parks. Joshua Thomas Marthe. Kathleen Marie Swallow. George Stephen Forrester. Teresa Elaine Stoner. William Armando Costablanco Viegas. Lori Ann Miller. Michael Bradley Earls. Lauren Tessa McNelly. Georgette Jean Johnson. Rhonda Lou Swords. Jade Tremaine McIntosh. Francis Ann Watson. Whitney Cole Finch. Edna Laverne Woodard. Lydia Faith Fowler. Sarah Elizabeth Robertson. Wendy Cruz. Stephen Jehonathan Walker. Amanda Jean Galbraith. Carl Joe Hall Rogers. Norman Enrique Gutierrez. Carlos Mitchell Ruedes. Richard Lee Grazier. Tiffany Hope Terranova. William Thomas Bray Sr. Diana Stephanie Montero. Glenn Eric Agron. Erica Janae Zimmerman. Jamie Marie Davis. Don Marie Sawson. Natalie Renee Horton. Stephen Edmund Sawson. Nathaniel Ramsey Horton. Bradley James Spangler. Shauna Leah Ann Estes. Michelle Renee Reynolds. Dominique Eve Carlton. Caitlin Summer Reisner. Edna Marie Meekins. Leah Ann Reisner. Ethel Jane Bodden. Karen Lynn Snow. Angela M. Fortner. Nicole Stephanie Lee Mason. Avril Maria Adams Williams. Elliot Eugene Stokes. Camila Melo Lacurgo. Timothy Dale Michaels. 
Sarah Renee Magro. Tassos Lacurgo. Marshall Lynn Brock. Delori Renee Hooley. Alexander Michael Hewley. Daniel Paul Walzak. Michaelin Elise Marthy. Chelsea Lynn Refner. Brittany Sierra Adams. Justin Daniel Hyatt. Grace Janine Kerner. With the entire 40th graduating class of Raymond Bible Training College, please stand. <laughs> On behalf on behalf of our president, Dr. Kenneth W. Hagan, our director, Reverend Lynette Hagan, all the faculty and staff of Raymond Bible Training College, our board of advisors, it is now my privilege and honor to present to you the entire graduating class of 2014. You may now move your tassels. Ask the graduates to please be seated. We ask that all, of our, all the friends and relatives of our graduates please remain in the arena after the benediction until all the graduates have left the arena. At this time, President Hagan will now present the charge to the graduates. You know, remember reading in Acts where Paul had a vision in the night and a man from Thessalonica said, come over and help us. Today, I had the privilege of signing in the papers that, is it next year? This coming up, we are opening a Rainbow Bible Training College in Thessalonica, Greece. I told Dean Tad, I said, I want to go teach in that school because Paul taught that. <laughs> you know, Dr. Halp was talking to you about courage. Let me tell you about a young man that learned faith like you did in 1980. He graduated in May of 1980. In September of 1980, he bought a one-way ticket to the Philippines and he landed in Manila, Philippines with 20 U.S. dollars in his pocket and he didn't know anybody. His name was Mike Keyes. Now you can go to the island of Mindanao and he has built a tremendous Bible school and a network of churches and he does have the Rama there, Rama there in Mindanao. Uh, Philippines. I was just there teaching a while ago, well, last year, I guess. And uh, courage, faith, trust in God. It takes courage to buy one way in, in 1980, and you don't know. It's one thing to take a 69 Toyota and drive to Kansas City. 
It's another thing to buy a one-way ticket to the Philippines and land in Manila, Philippines, and don't know anybody, and you got 20 U.S. dollars in your pocket. Courage. You know, when I sat down in the summer of 1974 to put together the curriculum for the first nine months of Rhema Bible Training Center at that time, now we're college. A school like this was not known. It wasn't in existence. Dad just said at camp meeting of, that year, uh, of the year, the previous year, we're going to start a Bible school. Then he looked at me and he said, you do it. I never went to Bible school. You, I paid for you to go. You do it. I said, okay, what do you want? So forth. He said, did you hear me? I said, you do it. I didn't go to Bible school. You did. But I said, Dan, I've got 30 hours of theology and 30 hours of Bible and 22 hours of psychology. I've got, I had no educational courses. He said, that don't make any difference. Put together a Bible school. Do you know it takes courage to sit down at a desk with a Bible and your handbook that you have from your Bible college and to put together nine months of curriculum and then make the announcement in July, and that was in, that was in May, May and June, and make the announcement in July that we're opening Rhema Bible Training Center in September no advertisement, we hadn't advertised anywhere, nothing. But you know what? 72 students showed up and 58 of them graduated. And sitting on this stage tonight is one of those 58, Reverend Doug Jones. Talking about courage, God told him to come to Rhema. He didn't know what it was. Some, somebody told him that, well, I heard about this school that's starting by the name of Rhema. He quit his job. I don't know why, were you 20 years old? 20 years old. He quit his job there in Michigan working at a factory. Got in his car and drove to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Didn't know anybody. And started Rhema. Let me tell you what. What Dr. Help said, courage. I've seen it played out over and over and over again, as has all of these people sitting on this stage and hundreds of them sitting up there. It sat where you sat, they walked out those doors with the same with vision and dreams that God had given them, but they didn't have no finances. But with courage and the Word of God, they are where they are today. And there's a lots of testimonies out there because I can look up in an audience and, and see them sitting. On, <laughs> there's one of them and over here, and over there. Tom Zimmerman, Mark but, uh, Bentliff. I mean, I could start through the audience and say, Jeff Jones, Beth Jones up there. I could start through the audience and see and see hundreds of them. But they where they are today because they had courage and faith. Believing that the God who brought them to school and got them through school would take them the rest of the way. Let me give you a charge tonight. I know no better way as you graduate tonight but to accept a charge you to be, to be true to the things that you've been taught and you've learned. In a few moments, you will walk out those doors and embark on a journey that God has for you. And I know of no better way to charge you than by reading to you from the pages of the Word of God. Isaiah 52, 7. 
How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news of peace and salvation. The news of the God of Israel reigns. Romans 10, 14 and 15. But how can they call on, call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is what the scriptures meant when they say, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. He is the one who gave these gifts to the church, the apostle, the prophets, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. And their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work, build up the church, the body of Christ, until we come to such a unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature and full grown in the Lord, measuring up to the full stature of Christ. 1 Timothy 3, 1 through 7. Here is a trustworthy saying, if anyone sets his heart on being an overseer, he desires a noble task. Now an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of but one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospital, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not, via, not violent but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders, so that he will not fall into disgrace in the devil's trap. 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 5. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that, that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. Endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding offer, officer. Similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. 2 Timothy 2, 14 through 16. Keep reminding them of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words. It is of no value. Only ruins those who listen. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed who correctly handles the word of truth. Avoid godless chatter, because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. 2 Timothy 2, 22 through 26. Flee the evil desires of youth. Pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, along with those who called on the Lord out of a pure heart. Don't have, don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments, because you know they produce quarrels and the Lord's servants must not quarrel instead he must be kind to everyone able to teach not resentful those who oppose him he must gently instruct in the hope that God will grant them repentance leading them to a knowledge of truth and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captivity to do his will 2 Timothy 3.14 But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it. 2 Timothy 3.16 and 17 All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. In the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, in the view of his appearing in his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season 
and out of season. In other words, that means be prepared to preach anytime, anywhere, any place that you find a pulpit. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when, when, when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardness, do the work of the evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. Let me say this, in this day and age that we're living in, there are quite a few people that are heaping unto themselves teachers telling them that they can do what they want to do and live the way they want to live and still be in Christ. That is false, and that's exactly what Paul's are talking about right here. I could preach a message to you, but I won't. 1 Timothy 6, 12. Fight the good fight of faith. That's the only fight you to fight, the fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. 1 Peter 5, 2 through 4. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you are willing as God wants you to be, not greedy for money, but eager to serve not lording over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will see the crown of glory that will never fade away. And last but not least, I leave you with the words from the Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 15 through 18. He said to them, Go out through the whole world and preach the gospel to all mankind. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. Believers will be given the power to perform miracles. They will drive out demons in my name. They will speak in strange tongues. If they pick up snakes or drink any poison, they will not be harmed. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. I charge you, go with what you've been entrusted with what you have been taught and make disciples for the kingdom of God. God bless you. We'll pray for you and God will perform what he said he will perform if you have the courage to trust him and go where he tells you to go. God bless you. Amen. Please rise for a word of prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for these men and women that comprise the Rama class of 2014, the 40th graduating class. Father God, we thank you that they'll understand that you do have a plan and a purpose for each and every one of them. And we thank you, Father, that they will fulfill that plan. We thank you, Father, they'll understand they have potential and they will fulfill that potential. Father God, we thank you as we unleash this class of 2014 upon a lost and dying and hungry world. We thank you, Father, that they're taking forth revival to this generation. They're taking forth to revival to the, to the nations all over the world. But Father God, we thank you that they'll understand that they've been taught faith, that they understand faith, but now it's time to rise up and take that message, to take the mandate that God gave Brother Hagen to go teach my people faith to this generation. Father, we just thank you right now for that you, have, that you are equipping them with everything that they need to go out and fulfill their ministry financially, physically, spiritually, emotionally, in every way. And we thank you, Father, that they'll never forget tonight's message by Dr. Halp. Whenever they're facing times that it looks like that, that it's time to quit, that they'll be able to understand that if God did what he did for Dr. Help, he'll do it for them. And they will, they will, they will succeed. And God, God's plan will be fulfilled.
Father God, we just praise you and we thank you in advance for the many men and women that will come to the knowledge of the kingdom of God through these great graduates and many lives that will be touched and healed and set free. Father God, we just pray a special prayer upon them and upon their life and help them to understand that they are called, they have been equipped, and now it's time to go. Father, we just thank you right now as each and every one of us um, go out to, to the highways and byways and we're, uh, back to our home places. We thank you for traveling mercies. We thank you for it now. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, let's sing our school song together.
That concludes the 2014